Hey guys, welcome to Data Track, your one-stop channel for all the data science and machine learning updates. In today's video, we will look at how neural networks can be used to approximate any function. Neural networks are called universal approximators. And in this experimental video, we will test the capability of neural network. We will start with something simple that is make a neural network learn how to add two numbers, make a neural network learn how to multiply two numbers and use the learnings from those fundamental tasks to train a neural network for even more complicated tasks or more sophisticated tasks which is approximating any function. That function can be linear, non-linear or even piecewise function. So let's get started. Neural networks are called universal approximators because they have the ability to approximate any function given enough number of hidden units, some non-linear activation which can be sigmoid, 10h, relu and some training data to learn from. In this short experiment video, we will try the following stuff. We will train a neural network to first add two numbers. We will train a neural network then to multiply two numbers and then finally we will use the learning of from those two fundamental tasks to come up with a neural network architecture that can approximate any function that can be linear, non-linear or even piecewise function just through training data and knowing of what the actual function to approximate is. So before getting into that, that is how to train a neural network, how to make a neural network learn addition or how to do multiplication, I want to clarify the difference how AI learns versus human will do that operation. The, the way human will do an operation of addition or multiplication is they will do it in a deterministic way. They know the mathematics, how the fundamental works, how the carry happens and so on. But neural networks learn in a different way. When provided with enough data points, they will just learn how to transform the input to an output. How given 2 plus 3, how to map 2, 2 plus 3 to 5. Similarly, how to map 7 plus 3 to 10 and so on. And one more thing is that the answer of this mapping can be uh, close but it might be possible that the mapping is not accurate. We can see in this example when I gave two operations one addition and one multiplication to chat GPT which is a very powerful AI trending these days the answer of addition was correct but the answer of multiplication was not correct. It was close but not correct. It was approximate but not correct. The answer to the addition operation from chat GPT AI is correct while the answer of multiplication is close but not accurate. The AI learned these functions only from training data the addition operation is trivial for a neural network to learn. It's an easier operation the, because of the way neural uh, network works, the, because of the way uh, the summation happens at the neurons. We will look into that. But, but when it comes to multiplication, it gets little tougher because of the way neurons learn. We will look into that. And then we will train the neural network once it has learned how to do addition and multiplication. Then we will train the neural network to do even more sophisticated tasks that is learn to approximate addition, multiplication and further generalize to learn any function which can be linear, non-linear or piecewise. Let's also do a deep dive into artificial neural networks that is how ANN works, how the setup is, how uh, the input is transformed into an output and what are the calculations that happens in each neurons. Artificial neural networks are multi-layered fully connected neural networks that is the first layer is fully connected to second layer is connected to third layer and third layer is fully connected to the output layer. It consists of input layer and there can be multiple hidden layers, the green ones and there will be one output layer. Every node in one layer is connected to every other node in the next layer. The network can be made deeper by increasing the number of hidden layers that is the green layers and zooming into one of the hidden or output nodes that is zooming into one of the neurons. We can see what happens there. So given node at a given node, what happens is that the weighted sum of its input is passed through a non-linear activation function. For example, in this node, first we do a weighted sum of inputs and weight that is w1 into x1, w2 into x2, w3 into x3, w4 into x4 and then the weighted sum with these weights, the summation that is the weighted sum with these inputs is passed through a non-linear activation function f. It can be ReLU, 10H and sigmoid and that goes as an input to the next layer. The output of the node becomes the input to another node in the next layer. Training this deep neural network means learning the weights associated with all the edges. When training happens, the weights are learned. And also 
there is a bias term w1 x1 w2 x2 plus there is also a bias term which is missing in this formula but there is also a bias term but it does it it helps in shifting the output so uh, let's start with the neural network architecture for addison for addison it can be simply two inputs and their weights going to the uh, neuron and there the weighted sum of inputs and weights will happen w1 x1 w2 x2 plus bias and it can be passed through a fun linear function so basically the neural network just has to learn that weights are close to one and that the function the f function can be a simple linear function or identity function which will map uh, x to itself and addition is done now looking at multiplication now we have seen the neural network architecture what happens in each neuron there is a summation of weights with inputs and that is passed through a nonlinear activation function but what we need to do here is multiply two inputs x1 into x2 that is a tougher operation but we can use a trick we know that multiplication means x cross y if we take a log of uh, both the sides and to nullify the log we can take an exponentiation right it will uh, become exponentiation log of m will be m only but in the right hand side lot of things changes when we take the exponential and log of x cross y we know that log x cross y can be written as log x plus log y and uh, which will be further simplified to exponentiation of log n x plus log n y so what the trick we can use is as soon as we get the input we can pass it through a lambda layer of log and now multiplication just becomes uh, addition problem where the uh, log of the input are added and then uh, this uh, it can be passed through a uh, neuron which will do the weighted summation that is add the two terms and then we can simply pass it through a non linear activation function which can be a exponentiation function and we will have the multiplication done so basically we take the input pass it through log lambda layer which will take the log and then simply the problem uh, turns to be an addition problem and the final output has to be passed through a exponential uh, activation function instead of linear activation function and we will have the multiplication now once we have learned how addition can be done to neural network what trick we can apply to make neural network learn multiplication let's use the learning of these two tasks to come up with a neural network architecture which can learn or approximate any function the function can be simple linear function 3x plus 10 or it can be a polynomial function as x squared x to the power 4 or 42 plus x to the power 3 or it can be a multiplication of x and exponentiation of x or it can be a piecewise function that is when x is less than 50 the output is x square when out input is between 50 and 100 output is 20 plus x and when the answer is greater than 100 the in output of uh, x is 5x so let's come up with an architecture and use the learning of addition and multiplication fundamental tasks to train a neural network which can approximate or learn any function. So uh, first let's look at all these tasks. For 3x plus 10 we can simply have a neural network with linear activation and it will learn the weight uh, is equal to 3 and bias can be 10 uh, and it will learn those bias and uh, weight of 3. For x squared, we know we can transform uh, the input through a log uh, layer and log of x squared will become 2 of log of x, right? And weight uh, can be learned, neural network will learn that the weight is close to 2. And finally, it will uh, be passed through a nonlinear activation layer of uh, exponential function. And x to the power 4, same thing, we can use the log trick and followed by exponential uh, activation function. For 42 plus x cube, similar trick can be used. Here, the bias term can learn to be close to 42. And uh, x multiplied by e to the power x, we can again use the uh, log trick. So, log of x multiplied by e to the power x can be simplified to log of x plus uh, log of e of x, which becomes x only. So, log of x plus x, and the neural network will learn. And for this, piecewise function we have already seen from above we can use either the linear function or non-linear function or exponential function to uh, approximate the functions but here the problem is the as the uh, at different bins at different cuts of x the uh, output changes so what we can do is 
wherever we had the linear function we can uh, change it to a relu function relu is a non linear uh, function uh, the whenever the input is greater than 0 it's an identity function and when the input is less than 0 uh, the output is zero so what will happen just changing the activation function from linear to relu it will take care of non linearity and decide which neurons to activate deactivates at different cuts of x and we will have our output so the one stop neural network architecture that can approximate any function will be this that is we take an input we pass it through a relu activation also there can be some function which may need log so we will pass it through a log uh, layer lambda layer as well and log lambda layer may be followed by exponential function or for some function it may just have needed to pass through a relu activation similarly the relu activation of input can be passed through an exponential function depending on some functions to learn or it can be directly passed further and once we have these four outputs that is log followed with relu activation log followed with exponential function or simply the input followed by a relu activation or the input followed with a relu activation and exponential function will concatenate all the four outputs and pass it through one final layer of relu activation to get the output and uh, depending on whatever the function neural network has to approximate it will turn on turn off some neurons it will learn the weights accordingly and we will see that whatever function we provide it will be able to approximate so with that we have uh, let's go to the practical session we will there we will see all these things into action so this is a kegel, kegel notebook where i have trained this neural network and i will make the link of the notebook available in the description section so uh, what we will do is we will import all the necessary libraries then we will first make a neural network to learn how to add two numbers we have seen addition of two numbers is very simple we can just pass it through a linear activation function and summation will happen at the neuron and it can learn that the weights are close to one right so first of all we will generate the training data that given this x1 and x2 y is the addition of two numbers neural network doesn't know how uh, what operation has happened on the input it, we just provided the data training data that i will provide you x1 and x2 this is the y you learn to approximate any new values that uh, we can provide you in future so uh, the architecture we have used uh, loss function as mean squared error and optimizer we have used Adam. If you uh, want to visually see the neural network architecture, we provide two inputs, we pass it through single neuron and there the uh, activation function is uh, linear. And uh, once we have provided the training data, it starts training and you can see the loss is reducing. And uh, over just 15 epochs, the loss has become close to zero and we now test on some new unseen data, 10 plus 100. The actual output should have been 110 and it has learned to be 111. So these two numbers, uh, 3581, 3582. So it has approximately uh, learned how to add two numbers uh, given any new uh, input we provide to it. Now uh, making an internet network learn how to do multiplication. We can first create a training data that given these two numbers, this is how the multiplication looks like. And then we can have our architecture. Here we have used this second architecture where we pass the input through log lambda layer and then the neuron where summation and linear activation happens followed by a uh, exponential function activation. So basically you can see the final layer has exponential activation and also we have this intermediate log lambda layers and uh, the optimizer used this atom, the loss function is mean squared logarithmic error and this is the neural network architecture is and over that uh, epochs we can see the loss is reducing and finally it has learned how to multiply two numbers we have trained it for about 125 epochs and loss function has reduced almost the loss function has reduced almost to zero and we can see on some test data 10 in 200 is 1000 and half, but the value that we have got is also 1000 this is 2901738 and 2.90 into 10 to power 6 so we can see the answers are very close Next, let's make the neural network approximate any function. Uh, we will start with 42 plus x to the power of uh, 3. And to train this neural network, we will use this architecture. And for any non-linear function or linear function or piecewise function, we will use this architecture, which is generic enough to approximate any function. 
So uh, we will uh, first generate the input which is uh, given uh, x, the output is 42 plus x cube and uh, we will uh, code this architecture. So we have used Keras and uh, you can see log layer and then there is a random layer, like exponential layer and also. So and this is the architecture. It is similar to what I have shown here. Uh, wherever we see lambda there is a log layer and either it can be passed through relu activation or it can be passed through exponential layer and input can uh, may not be need to pass through log layer it can come directly from a relu activation and we will concatenate all the all the four values log layer uh, with exponential activation log layer with relu activation normal input with relu activation or normal input with uh, Relu activation followed by exponential function. All the fours are concatenated and pass through uh, one more, uh, two more dense layer to produce the final output. And we can see for 42 plus x cube, the uh, the neural network has started training. And over uh, multiple epochs, the uh, loss has reduced to almost zero. And uh, we have again tested for some training example. 10.3. The answer is 100, 1134, and the output is also close. And if we try to visualize um, the two lines overlaps, that is input is accurately mapped to the right, uh, the right output y true and y prediction are almost same. Next we will try to make it learn x multiplied by e to the power of x. So same thing, we will first generate the training data that is uh, you can see uh, exponential function of x multiplied by x and uh, the same neural network architecture. This the genetic neural network architecture to approximate any function, linear, non-linear or piecewise and over multiple uh, epochs we will see that the training loss is reducing. Okay, one more thing that I had happened was sometimes it was happening that the neural network was not training, it was getting stuck. You can see the loss is stuck at 81.88. So what I did for these cases was whenever this thing happened, I uh, uh, reinitiated the weights. And I found that on reinitializing the weights, uh, the neural network starts training. So that is what I have done. If it's getting is, is stuck for uh, uh, some 10 epochs, I have put a callback here that patience equal to 10. There is a callback that if neural network is getting is stuck for 10 epochs, try some different initialization of weights, weights and then start try, uh, trying to learn. So you can see on uh, here it got stuck and for some new initialized weights the loss has started to reduce and uh, finally it would have over multiple epochs we can see the loss has not become zero but it is very small and uh, the uh, output expected and the output are close 288 and it is 290 11054 11092 so the outputs are close but uh, but not exactly same and when we try to see visualize it it has uh, the two lines are overlapping that is the actual expected output and the predicted outputs are very close and finally we will make it learn the most complicated stuff that is piecewise function that is when x is less than 50 we want x square when x is between 50 and 100 we want 20 plus x and when the input is greater than 100 we want 5x so basically uh, the, this piecewise function we will make it learn and the neural network architecture is common generic this one. So uh, we can see we will first generate the uh, training data and uh, we will start training our uh, neural network and we can see that over multiple epochs the loss is reducing. And finally we can see that it has learned uh, the uh, piecewise function. Now given some unseen uh, input, 11 the output should have been 121, it is 119, very close. And if you try to visualize it, the blue one was the exact expected output and orange one is the learned one. You can see that when it's between 0 to 50, because of x square there is sudden peak and it has very beautifully learned it. And after that there is uh, this function 20 plus x and after that, uh, that 20 plus x uh, becomes larger, it becomes 5x. So it has, uh, if, if it would have trained it longer, it would have even learned 
this current but still it has done a decent job here it knows there is a peak and then the uh, then the output uh, stabilizes and then again it exponentially increases so uh, so uh, we have seen through this uh, notebook that how we can use a common uh, generic architecture to approximate any function and uh, with this we also come to the end of this video uh, where we looked at why neural networks are called universal approximator how we can make a neural network learn how to add two numbers how to multiply two numbers and how this uh, operations learning are different from the way human does those, those those operations the way neural network learns is it learns how to map an input to an output and then we use the learnings from those fundamental tasks of addition and multiplication to make neural network approximate any function uh, hope you liked and enjoyed the video uh, feel free to extend on this work and please like subscribe and uh, stay tuned for more such updates bye